Hey everybody, just smile and wave. No longer a sailing vessel. Little update, uh, vessel was sold and the new owner is very uh, excited and she's uh, hit the ground running with it. So anyway, that chapter is now closed for us for the time being. And we are here on our farm, which will be renamed shortly. The channel will be renamed. Um, this is just the back right now. It's an old, old house, 1964 concrete block. We're down in central Florida. Uh, we had the pool put in. It's still in the process of being finished. Uh, it's still, it's swimmable right now, but they still have to put the salt sail in, in it and uh, do the staining on the concrete. And then once that's done, then we'll finish uh, like a temporary wooden deck here with a fence enclosure as per Florida law that's required. And um, maybe in a couple years we'll revisit that. And I'm gonna put a uh, tiki bar right over there and uh, it'll be pretty cool. So it's our land. Um, we have about 18 acres almost uh, out here and it's great, it's great, uh, it's great land, it's beautiful. And we're doing our best to uh, propagate crops and transform it into our dream. And uh, since the sailboat dream kind of faded away on us, so um, so just a little, you know, just gonna give you a little quick walk around. Then I'll upload this to YouTube. Again, we don't monetize, so you'll hear music in the background. Uh, we just do this just for fun more than anything. Um, so I got a little. Banana transplant. I transplanted that from the little banana grove over there. You can see it right there. And uh, let's see how they do. A couple of Queen Anne palms, and all those are in the uh, in planters just because uh, we had a like a 19, 19 degree freeze back in December, and it killed a lot of our fruit and stuff. So we will be prepared this next time. So I've got chickens everywhere, obviously. Uh, Oh, it looks like my daughter left her shoes out again. Imagine that. A uh, little walk around the property. Got some elderberries right here. Bananas. We try to trim back this wild dill. And these are all elderberries growing. I have to trim them out. This is a... Uh, looks like they broke it, but... Um, Star lily, I think it is. But it's pretty. Yeah, I broke one right there. Just fell. Come here, you. All right. So yeah, oh wow, it smells wonderful. So there's a chicken hiding in there with that wild dill. Uh, that's gonna become a backstop. So over against the, the trees over there, this, and there's another pile. I don't know if you can see it or not, but um, it's right there. Those two are gonna be put together and they're gonna become a backstop over there so I can do a little bit of rifle shooting and have fun. Uh, over here, uh, back side of the bananas. These are our berry, this is our berry patch. These are uh, blackberries. These are thornless. If you haven't had thornless blackberries, they're awesome. You know, you can grab them, they don't stick you. Uh, there's a raspberry plant here that looks like it's, it's not doing so hot. So I'll probably get another one. I don't know if I'll try them or not. They, they don't seem to do very well down south. Uh, blueberries on the other side. This is a tea plant right here, black tea. So we'll have fun playing with that. There's a couple other blueberries in here, but the weeds are overtaking this. So we're gonna dig them up and re redo all this uh, into a raised bed. So the soil here is very sandy. It needs a lot of work. That's why the garden patch here looks pretty pathetic. The weeds overtake it. We don't use glyphosate or whatever you wanna call it, Roundup, we don't do that. Uh, there's already enough in this soil, it's, it's pathetic. So anyway, we're working on the garden. Uh, I've got some peas growing. I got some butter beans. Uh, you can see the peas are already starting to bloom here and come out in their little shoots. So that's good. These are um, purple hole peas, which is kind of a constant staple in the south. Got some uh, hot banana peppers over there, not doing so hot. <laughs> the cayennes aren't doing anything. There's some onions over there too, but you can't hardly see them for all the weeds. Uh, so over here, our, this is our raised bed area. It's going to become 
a uh, this will be enclosed in a pole barn fashion and it's gonna become a, a greenhouse a hot house so what i'll do is I'll, I'll put the poles on either side uh eight foot they'll go up about six i'll put a 10 foot pole in the middle it'll go up about eight and then I'll, I'll just build it out and then eventually i'll mow all this down and i will lay uh either lay weed block and throw uh, river rock in it or i will just uh concrete it but either way, uh, this, will, this will be framed in. It'll have wood at the bottom for about four feet and then the polycarbonate panels that are clear. So this will make this a, a, a hot house slash greenhouse. And it'll just stand out past that olive barrel, that, that red barrel is an olive barrel that I got to make a feeder out of. These guys are my roosters and they kept, uh, you know, annoying the hens, so to speak, especially the young ones who aren't quite ready for that. So they got put out to pasture. Um, I'm probably going to call them because they're all offspring from my main rooster. So I don't want them mating with any of these in here with the exception of uh, maybe those gray ones, which are Easter eggers and the red ones, which are from not from the original flock. The white ones are American breasts. So you see they have the, uh, the red top, the blue legs and the white bodies. Uh, they are a take off the French breast. They're from the same line, and they are the most delicious uh, meat bird you can get pretty much in the world. In France, they run about uh, 100 euros for one bird. What they do typically is uh, by age, you know, by the fifth month, they finish them off for a month and a half to two months with uh, cracked corn soaked in uh, milk or cream. So you see these three little ones, those are actually offspring from the, the barnyard flock here. Um, I've got a couple other uh, coops over here. This is this main coop and these are all going to be moved in between the dirt pile there and the burn pile. Uh, that's in the next few weeks that'll happen. And then this will give way for the rest of the orchard. So here's a tropical prince peach, I believe it is. We got kind of got eight by the birds that fell down. Uh, trop, tropic Beauty Peach, they call it. I, I don't know. Never heard of it. We have uh, Florida Prince. We have Tropic Prince. We have all kinds of uh, all kinds of peach trees. So that's one of the peach trees. Um, this is also Tropic Tropical Peach. Tropical Peach, and these last four are nectarine. So they look a little peaked and yellow. We've added some fertilizer and. We had to spray them because we, we had a bacterial infection that spread from trees from tractor supply. This is not knocking tractor supply. They probably didn't know, but the trees we got, they those holes over here, that's where they were planted. And they spread this disease to uh, all the rest of the fruit trees. Well, not the fruit trees, just the nectarine, peach, and the plums. So the soft flesh fruit. So I've been spraying it with organic uh, treatment and it's been working pretty well. All the tops are coming back and looking good. Uh, peaches, the plums, eh, not as good, but uh, this one is particularly eaten up. I don't know if it's bug. I think it looks like it's bugs as well as uh, maybe a little disease, but I keep spraying it. The other ones, this one and that one look a little better. Um, you can see the tops. They're pretty good. Uh, we have some kefir pears. Those are Orosa plums. And um, these are olives, which they're black olives. We got about five of them um, down the way there. If you look, you'll see two red mulberry trees. Those are native to North America. We have those planted. And then these are also mulberries. Um, I believe these are more like what you see up north in Canada. And they actually produced really well to, uh, this year. They had some really nice fruit on them. And overall, they look pretty good, except for this little piece here. It's weird. I'll have to come and uh, trim that. Uh, more mulberry. Figs, the figs love it here. Figs are native to North America. Um, and they love it. The uh, freeze killed this one down to the root. And it came back from the root, and you can see it's doing pretty well. Um, this one also... I've got to get in there and clip the grass away. And we got some rings to put around those. More uh, peach trees that we planted. I planted yesterday, Tropic Beauties. 
Tropic, this is also Tropic Beauty. And they look pretty healthy. And then this was the very first one we got, which is a, um, this is a Florida Prince peach. And it actually produced really good fruit along with that other one that's big. Uh, I say big, bigger. They produced uh, between the two of them, probably about a dozen peaches. And I tell you what, they were delicious. So let's see what else we got going on here. So I have a contract for haying and um, keep it in, you know, if you're in Florida, you gotta keep your land in ag exemption to keep the, the taxes lower. So, and I have a guy come out here and he hays this. This is Bahia, it's just cow hay is all it is. It's nothing fancy, but it satisfies the need for uh, haying. This area that's cut is, uh, I cut that with a tractor. This area was cut with a lawnmower, which is a little bit better. Um, this is gonna be all be orchard. So once I remove that chicken coop and move it over there, that'll be still part of the orchard. And then from here back will be the uh, greenhouse. It'll just keep it standing as we need it. I'll run it back. I'll just keep running the beds and run them back as far as I need to. These are our zucchini hills and watermelon hills. The netting is just to kind of keep the chickens out. Uh, normally it does when it's <laughs> up, you know, up high enough here. So sometimes it just blows over, but there we go. So anyway, uh, five of these are zucchini and that far one is watermelon and then our pathetic corn patch. So the, the corn needs more nutrients. Uh, this area down here is a little bit more wet. The soil is a little darker but it's still, you know, the, the grass is robbing a lot. And again, we don't, we don't use, um, what do you call it, Roundup, glyphosate, that stuff causes cancer. And so consequently, it's gonna be work in progress. So this is the first year we planted. This is a heirloom crop. Um, I'd have to look up the name, but it's not a hybrid or GMO. This is all heirloom. Everything we plant is heirloom. So obviously it doesn't produce as well as some of the hybrids do, but I'd rather know what's in my food and it's not genetically modified uh, versus eating Lord knows what. So we had to add nutrients as you can see how sandy the soil is right there. It's very sandy. So um, unfortunately that's just the way it goes in Florida, right? Poor soil quality, poor water quality. So you got to improve that yourself. So these are all uh, watermelons and they're doing pretty good, it looks like. So we'll get in here and train these vines and move them. Chickens are in the dirt, or the, not the dirt pile, but the burn pile. Looks like they're feasting on bugs, which is good. Uh, this is just kind of a, a runabout of the farm. Um, my property goes all the way to that corner where you see the pole. There's a fence just to the uh, right of that. And it goes to that corner of that wood line about 20 feet inside that wood line all the way across there's a center fence here that's all ours too but everything on the other side so um i'm gonna replace replace that uh fence with my neighbor he's gonna help me do the labor and i'm paying for the materials and uh, that'll be a project this summer gotta replace that gate over there right there um and orchard we're just gonna continue we got 30 trees right now and we're gonna continue planting so we have about a total of about 50 to 60. I don't expect fruit off of them for several years. Obviously we got some off these first couple, but uh, come fall, we'll prune them again and fertilize them. And there's gonna be rings put in. So there'll be a galvanized ring around every one of them. That's about 30 to 36 inches wide and about a nine inches to a foot tall. We're, we're gonna mound, uh, we're gonna dig them, actually dig them up. We're gonna raise them because the soil quality here is just crap and they, they sprayed these fields with glyphosate for years so it stunts the growth of the plants so we're trying to stay as organic as possible even though we can't can't call it organic here with all the glyphosate that's been sprayed on this field for 20 some odd years um, but we're going to raise them up unless they look like they're doing well we'll raise them up and mound it with a good soil uh, we have a uh, we have a place to go get organic compost by the truck bed full so I'm gonna go get get some by the truck bed there there's the old tractor 
she ain't much she's just a little farm all cub with a center uh, belly mower on it 50, 1957 so i use that to kind of cut and haul stuff this uh pecan tree in the front is hollow and rotten on the inside the other one already has fallen years ago so we will be cutting that down and this whole front is going to be redone with uh redone into a nice uh landscaped um pretty much zero scape every pretty much all the front yard and the backyard where the pool is going to be zero scape so there's no lawn to take care of um that way we'll save on water uh we only we're going to set all this up on a drip system and i'm gonna plant one more row on this side you see i got enough room to go one more row so i'm not sure what i'm gonna plant there yet we'll figure it out but um big black cherry trees of course pines that tree is my nemesis um it's a sweet olive tree they're crap it's a bush that's basically overgrown so it's coming down uh we have uh mice and rat problems here in florida and this particular area is really bad uh so i'm constantly setting traps and killing them so and when i move coops that they we set a coop up in florida put it up off the ground and don't leave anywhere for them to build a nest or they will so they actually climb up in this tree and they were hopping off the tree onto the roof and getting into the attic but i cut a whole bunch of stuff down as much as i could physically uh, without it being dangerous for me and, and i'm gonna come back and um i'm gonna cut it all down i'll cut it way back i might leave one on leaning that way to cast some shade but when we put the chicken coops up over here uh, we will have um, more shade over there planted for them so Girls are laying eggs. I haven't had any issues with egg laying. Uh, they've already collected several, but I've got four in there right now. Those are ceramic. You can see there's mice poop and rat poop in there because they get in here. But I set a trap every night um, in here and I've been averaging about three a night, sometimes more. Just depends, uh, depends. I, I went to a hanging feeder, that helped. Everything's hanging. And uh, my feed stored in those galvanized cans there. And then this is my medical hooch right here. It's where I keep my, uh, I have a, we call it Gimp. She's kind of, she was born with a defective foot, but could, didn't have the heart to just kill her. And then that's another breast in there. That's the $90 chicken right there out of 12 I hatched. I hatched three, two died, and she was the one that lived. Or I say she, it might even be a he. It looks like a hen though. So it cost me 90 bucks and for all that, and that's the only one I got to show for it. So if you're doing breasts, American breasts um, hatching, I highly suggest that you take into account the cost of the, uh, the chicken the eggs and everything when you buy them. And I think some of these people are selling bum eggs. They're like one or two fertilized and the rest are just crap eggs. But I don't know that for a fact, it's just speculation, so. And anyway, uh, I will um, end it here and hope everybody is, if you're interested in homesteading and farming, uh, please subscribe, tell your friends. We're not making any money on this. Um, again, we're just doing it for fun. And uh, things are getting, they're getting there. Cucumbers. So the cucumbers in those rings, they're coming up. Tomatoes, they're not big enough. Something's up with the soil. Um, these we put a little bit of that soil from that mound in there, which is mostly clay and sand, so that might be something to do with it. But with the amount of uh, good soil we mixed in, it shouldn't have made a difference. But somehow they're just stunted. I think it could be the colder temperatures this year. Uh, these have been planted for about two and a half, three weeks, and they're not showing much growth, a little bit. These were only planted last week. That one was planted yesterday, it was just transplanted. Uh, so we got some fencing from the neighbor to put up. You can see the the chickens are on their little perch that i built them out of part of the tree i cut down i figured hey why why let it go to waste go to perch they like to hang out with the perch what you doing yeah what you doing don't bite me huh yeah what you doing girls and boys so the breasts will all be separated into their own uh coop like this run like this with a individual coop uh here soon and 
that's is that rusty or is that junior that's junior junior is rusty's little brother he's a rooster that's butter running away from me because butter's bad and that one rocking around here with the kind of white with little black specks is biscuit and rusty is somewhere around here probably chasing tail there he is over there he's running around the corner hey. <laughs> i get you yeah think so huh i'll boot you yeah so there's rusty right there so that's them y'all take care enjoy have a good memorial day and thanks for watching